Jackie Dunbar. Mr Kerr. Well, I would congratulate Audrey Nicholl for bringing this motion in. Of course, she's quite right. And I want to frighten Michelle Thompson by telling her I agreed with every word in her speech as well. Because if we don't maximise the talent and productivity of every single Scot, it's Scotland, it's Scottish business, it's our economy, and it's our society that will suffer. And it's because I passionately believe in equality of opportunity for everyone that I'm a Scottish Conservative. Because to me, that's what Scottish Conservatism is all about. It's about opportunity and choice in supporting every citizen in realising their full potential and to live the best life they aspire to live. This debate, then, presiding officer, is not about the principle of increasing the participation of women and girls in STEM as much as it is how to do it. So what can we do as parliamentarians to encourage more women and girls across our nation to feel confident that they can unlock their full potential in STEM? Well, first, we need to introduce STEM to children from early years through play. I think we should let children discover the fascination of STEM, all the different aspects of STEM. Let them develop their problem-solving skills. Let them build things. Let them get dressed up and encourage them to let their imagination and their curiosity run riot. Girls and boys alike, no demarcations, no barriers from the very beginning of their educational experience. Let's bring STEM to the table in nurseries and in primary and in secondary schools. Let's give our children a vision of all the different kinds of jobs there are in every walk of life, which are STEM-based jobs. And we do have to make a special effort to remove the barriers that seem to have been placed in the way of girls realising their dreams through STEM. We should have what I would describe as inspirational dissatisfaction about the current level of guidance we give our young people. If we had our way, the Scottish Conservatives would seriously invest in giving our young people the best possible guidance and mentoring. We live in a digital world. Put digital technology in their hands. Teach them to boss the technology rather than becoming bossed by it. Let's bring the different stages of a child's educational journey together. I uh, learned a new word this week, uh, courtesy of Sir Peter Matheson, the principal of Edinburgh University. Interdigitization. I hadn't come across that word before. Apparently it means, it's a word that describes what happens when we bring our fingers together. Uh, and, and he used it in the context of bringing all the different parts of an educational journey uh, together. They, they need to be brought together. We, so we need to bring employers, we need to bring colleges, universities that are involved with our children much earlier into their educational journey. Guidance, for example, shouldn't be left to S3 or S4 or S5. It's too late at that stage to begin to help our young people, especially our young women, discover where their passions and interests and aptitudes lie, and especially in relation to STEM. Careers in STEM, in artificial intelligence, in the space sector, where we Scots excel. We can't afford our young people, especially girls and women, to think that career opportunities for those sectors are there but for other people. And we can't afford our young people even to begin to think that their dreams can't be followed because they don't have the same opportunity as anyone else. We must change the narrative about what is possible for all our young people, men and women alike. And we must tackle the idea that going to university is the only route to success. If we get the interdigitization right, then our young people should have more exposure to different businesses, different sectors, to colleges and to universities. And they'll begin to see the array, the vast array of opportunity that lies ahead of them. And that there is a choice of pathways, all of which have equal esteem, whether it be an apprenticeship, or professional and technical training qualifications, or studying for a qualification at college or university. But the narrative must change because there is a commonly held disparity of esteem. And that won't change unless the Scottish Government and all of us supporting the Scottish Government tackles this head on. And I have to say uh, that the, to the Minister that the track record of this Government on apprenticeships, on funding colleges and universities leaves much to be desired. Ministers must start listening. They must start to shape policy around the outcomes that we want to see happen, and that may, means making tough choices and setting priorities. 
we cannot have a deprioritisation of education because Scotland needs its young people to flourish like never before. The world needs our young people to flourish like never before because we are facing big strategic challenges. And it's increasingly to the STEM subject areas and to STEM-based sectors that we look to for solutions. Mr Kerr, could you please conclude? Thank you. I am. But this government needs to match its actions with rhetoric. So I hope the minister, in his response, will bring new thinking to the role that he's now filling, because we need it. And if he does, and he makes the right choices for Scotland and our young people, we on these benches will back him. We need the full potential of our young people, women and girls, men and boys, to be unleashed, especially in the areas of science, technology, engineering and mathematics.